All right. Well, I have been in the midst of a battle today with a group of blades that I've been working on. Um, occasionally we run into blades that just want to give a fit. <clears throat> in this particular case, they're giving a fit because, well, they weren't sharpened properly. And that does happen out in the field from time to time. Now it's odd because the gentleman that I'm actually sharpening behind normally does a good job. So I'm not sure what happened that particular day. Uh, but these blades are in some pretty interesting shapes. So um, I just want to kind of show you what I'm running up against. So give me just a second. I'm going to pull a blade out here and kind of show you. All right. So <clears throat> the main issue that I'm running into with some of these blades is you can actually see how the inside surface when it was cut originally was severely over rounded around the tips and and what you're not seeing here on this video too <clears throat> is actually how this cutter started out um, it literally was almost an oval in the middle when i checked the previous grind pattern uh, on this blade uh, to give you an example of this, this is the, the cutter side of the of the blade, and you can actually uh, see that oval that I was talking about that has to be overcome, uh, which isn't a big deal. You can sharpen this out. Fortunately, there is enough life on this blade to be able to make this work, and then uh, the blade have a little bit more life to it after the fact. Uh, but a good bit of work is actually going to have to be done to this blade. So what I wanted to touch base on was just kind of showing <clears throat> what I'm going to do in order to be able to uh, keep heat down uh, and then do the work within a, a reasonable amount of time. But this blade, quite frankly, is going to take a little bit longer to repair than others, regardless of what I do. All right. So I'm going to start the process of doing the sharpening on this blade. And um, <clears throat> in this particular case probably using a 180 grit uh, on these blades would, would cut these in a lot faster. Now, I only use 240 grit when I do sharpening. There's a lot that use 220. Um, I use 240 because I like the way that the blades cut after the fact. It does help to burnish them in just a little bit as well. Um, but 180 would actually be, in this particular case, uh, a little bit better uh, of a grit to use because it would actually cut that down. Unfortunately, I don't have that. So since I'm on the van, that's going to take me a little bit longer to do the work. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start up my wheel after I charge it. So I'm going to show you how I charge my wheel on my CS201 16 inch plate machine. All right, when I charge the plate, I just go through some simple steps. The first step that I go through is I actually clean with H42. I'm going to do a couple of sprays over the top of the plate. I take a full size sheet of paper towel and I clean my plate. There's numerous ways to charge these plates. This plate, this way has just always worked well for me. As I spin around, you can see the plate just naturally spins with the spinning of my hand on the plate as I clean it. You can see the material that I get off of the plate. I'm gonna just flip this over and then just continue to clean until I dry this off just a little bit, get most of that grit that was on the plate off of there. I'm gonna then flip the towel around and I'm gonna take a mixture 50-50 of H42 and lard oil and I'm gonna do about a silver dollar size puddle that I spray on the plate. I'm then just gonna spread that right around the plate, same way as how I cleaned. And I'm just gonna lightly wipe over the top. You wanna have just a little bit of grease. You can actually see me draw on the plate where you're gonna be able to put some grit on and the grit will hold on the plate. This lard oil and H42 and straight lard oil works just fine too as a medium to hold the grit on the plate. Always make sure you're reasonably liberal with your <clears throat> grit that you use on the plate, mainly because you want to make sure that you are not getting past the grit onto the plate and then smoothing the plate out and warping the plate. Uh, you won't get a good cut on your blades if your plate is not in good condition. So I just used a three inch paintbrush to go ahead and spread that around the plate. And now I'm just doing a quick charge. with a wooden charging block. This is just some pine that I use to spread that around. I'm gonna start my machine up. Now this is gonna start off slow and it will pick up speed as we go.
The nice thing about these units is, is they are easy start, so they can be started quite simply on a um, <coughs> inverter without a problem. I'm using a 2500 watt inverter on this, but um, you can use a 1500 watt inverter. You can go as low as a thousand watt. But remember that I'm running a light on this, so there is a light up here that I'm actually running as well. Um, and then I also run my demagnetizer on this and other things. So just keep in mind, I also run a vacuum a lot of times when I'm doing this as well. I'm just not going to run it during the video because it would be too loud. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start. And you can see my spark pattern kicking off. And I'm going to stay straight on the plate. Sorry, while I was doing a little bit of that cut, you saw me go a little crooked, but I was looking at my camera instead of looking what I was doing. Wanted to make sure I was catching that. And what I'm doing now is I'm just going to check the blade to make sure that I am getting a decent pattern on here and cutting enough up the teeth in order to be able to get a clean cut back and forth across the blade. Now on this particular blade, probably what I'm gonna end up doing, since you've seen that I've already started to do some sharpening on it, just based on what you saw on this before we started, is I'm not probably gonna take on the comb uh, the grind line on the inside all the way up to the very tips of the teeth. I'll probably get close and then I'll go ahead and I will settle. When I do the setback on this, I'll settle the cutter back just a little bit um, so that there's enough throw back and forth, but I don't want to go ahead and continue to sharpen on this blade over and over again when there's no reason to continue to do that on the comb. When you do your setback on the blade, you can drop your cutter back behind the problem area and the blade will cut fine. On the cutter though, we don't have that choice. So if you have an improperly cut cutter on a clipper blade, you're gonna have to correct that problem. And I'll see if I can put up a picture of another one that I ran into earlier that had issues on the outside teeth um, that I didn't get with the first sharpening. I'm going to go back and forth now until I can clean this blade all the way up. Now what I want to be careful that I don't do is I don't want to overheat the blade. So I don't happen to have this on here and that's making me rethink um, what I'm doing. I probably need to have a piece of ceramic tile or something that I can use to cool a blade down. Um, a little bit quicker because this one could stand to be cooled down. So what I'm going to do is I just ran this one. I'm going to cool it down on my palm. So when I say it's hot, I mean it's not burning hot, but you don't want to overheat any of these blades because you can warp them. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on again. Take a look at my work. And you can see, let me swing this over here to the magnifier. Then I'm starting to get a little bit closer, but you can see there's still a whole lot of work that needs to be done on this blade. So what I would do in this particular case is I would continue to cut and continue to cut and continue to cut on this, cu this cutter until I got all the way past all the damage that's on the teeth. The issue is, is there's so much damage on these last three blades that I'm doing that it's probably going to be better for me to go ahead and just pull f three new cutters and put new cutter blades on these blades. So that's, I think, the course that I'm going to take in order to be able to correct this. Okay, you could hear the machine, or I don't know if you noticed this or not, but on the machine, you could actually hear it going wah, 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 making a sound kind of like that, uh, to uh, just slow the machine down. There's a brake on this machine that stops the machine after you're doing your work. Uh, it's another feature of this machine that I like. So I'm going to go back in, I'm going to clean the plate, and I'm going to do the other two combs for these other two blades and get them within reason. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the cutters on the other two. 
All right, I've recharged my plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this back up. The reason that I recharged my plate after only one blade is because I did a lot of work on that cutter. And also, again, I'm using 240 grit, so I wanna make sure that I have a freshly gritted wheel. And I also wanna make sure that I don't get all the way down to the plate through the grit and create any problems for myself in the future with this plate. I have several blades on this plate now, and while I was at the Sharpener's Jam this past weekend, I double-checked this plate <clears throat> with Jason from the Edge Pro, who manufactures the Nebraska Blades machines now. And he, uh, we confirmed that the, this blade is still cutting well. Um, you can see here that I've uh, put the magnet at the root of the teeth, not the root of the flutes, but at the root of the teeth. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the sharpening on this blade. You can see the quality of my spark pattern. All right, that one sharpened up pretty well. I'm gonna take another quick look at this cutter just to make sure that I need to replace this one. I didn't do as much work on this particular blade. No, yeah, no. So you can see right here, um, on the cutter, let's see if we can get this to come in just here in the light without going to the magnifier, that there's still a lot of damage on the tips of that cutter. So I'm just gonna switch that out. The customer is gonna be a lot better off once I do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that, I'm not try and fight that process. Um, I know that I can save her a little bit of money, but it's not always saving money by doing a blade to the point where you're overheating it. Because in the long run, it's not gonna cut as well. And quite frankly, that's gonna reflect poorly on you as a sharpener as well. All right, <clears throat> so just to kind of show you what I've got here on this blade. Drop this down. So you can see the tips are still rounded out, but I've got a lot of surface to actually play with here in order to be able to get this to get the cutter on this blade. Um, so I'm gonna, when I do the setback on this, I'm gonna make sure that it's back behind that because every other part of this um, comb is cut properly. It's just not cut properly all the way out to the tips. So as long as that setback is set back behind where the problem is, um, where it's, uh, it, it'll be okay. So, um, and then finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, sharpen the cutters as well. Um, Sorry. The cutters that I use are from one of our sponsors of the channel, uh, Groomer's best friend, Matthew Yo. And um, I use his aftermarket cutters on my blades. They work very well, but I always like to just put my edge on everything that I'm gonna put into anybody's hands. So I'm just double checking the cut that I got on my cutter here. Just make sure that we get this touched up nicely. Come up off of the plate. All right, that's gonna go in there. Gonna do this one, and then one more. We're gonna be ready to look at assembling these blades. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and demagnetize my blades. have been demagnetized I always like to take the parts that I'm going to be mating together with the blade and do a little adjustment these tools are made by Hamaguri USA which is another sponsor of our channel and I'm just adding a little bit of tension to the springs now I always add just a smidge of tension to the springs because again we've taken a little bit off of the blade and I want to add some tension now because it's much easier to take tension off of a blade then add tension after the fact. This is a tool that Dennis makes with Hamaguri USA to be able to easily add tension. He has another tool here for setting your sockets. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna set each of the sockets. And make sure they're squeezed in properly. Those didn't move, so they were set properly to begin with by the other sharpener, which is good. All right, so we'll start the blade assembly. All right, 
I'm gonna start the process of doing blade assembly by doing some cleaning on the blade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna down actually below the camera. I'm gonna run a brush through um, the blade because I show a lot of people this that don't wanna have a vac system and don't wanna have um, like a, a compressed air system on their van. I use this to clean the blades out and deburr them by pulling the burrs forward um, as a step. So I'm gonna go through the blade I'm gonna come around the front and I'm gonna pull the burrs off of the front of the blade. Now it's not gonna hurt the blade because the blade is actually much harder than this bristle brush is, which is just a scrubbing brush that you can pick up at most any store, like maybe an Ollie's or uh, Dollar General or someplace like that. Uh, again, through the teeth, I'm gonna come back around and I'm gonna go ahead and work the other side of the blade and I'm gonna do all three of these blades that way. All right. So now that we've cleaned through that blade, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the comb down, wipe the cutter down. I wipe any of the mating surfaces and I'm doing blades this way. And then we'll start the assembly process. Okay, to assemble the blades is quite simple. We're just gonna go ahead and lay them out. We're gonna take a little bit of oil. We'll put some oil across the teeth and the back rail, two drops, and then a drop on the cutter for the blade guide. Once I have all that together, I'm gonna go ahead and set my spring on top of the blade, but you can actually see how it's wiggling. Do you see how it's wiggling like that? But what happens a lot of times blade guy just fell off too, is if you look at this blade, you can actually see that it's crooked. So what I like to do is I like to straighten that spring before I go ahead and put that back on. Let's put that blade guide back on there. We'll put our socket back in so the socket will go up and in like this, move over and then pull back. That's why you're not fighting with that socket. And you can see it still is off a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look and see if it had some memory and moved back. Yep, just a little. Straighten that a little bit better. There we go. And again, same thing. Put the socket back on. The guy keeps wanting to make a run for it. Put that over our piece. And now, we're much better than we were. So we're gonna flip this over. We're gonna align our holes. So there's a slotted hole in the spring and then there's a hole that you can kind of see moving around that's threaded that's in the socket. And you need to align the two holes in order to be able to get the screw started. course whenever you're doing anything for a video. Alright, so we got those holes aligned and we get that started. You can actually see where that made it together properly. And do the same thing for the second screw. Alright, so I'm gonna push this back and get prepared to do my setback. Alright, so I'm on my magnet top my Magna fire again, and I want to show you the setback that I'm going to do on the blade here. Let's pull that off and see if we can. There we go. That'll be a little bit better without that light. And with some natural light coming through the window, you can see what I'm doing with the setback on this blade. I want to make sure that when I do this, I want the tips of my cutter to be underneath that damage that's on that blade. So you can see that damage is still there. You can see the tips of the cutter. Are going to be back from that. You can actually see a lot of times the um, setback a little bit better if you hold the blade this way and look down the blade as opposed to trying to look across it. I'm going to get that set up properly and then we're going to go ahead and tighten that up. So I'm just going to palm this and I'm going to go in and I'm going to just do a snug and snug and I'm going to tighten it and I'm going to tighten it. 
And that way, if that cutter moved forward at all, it didn't move forward a lot. So what I wanna do now is I wanna make sure that I'm back behind where my problem is. And I can see that fairly well, although having that cutter on there along with that, there's an awful lot of, oh, there we go. We can see that. You can see we're actually behind where the damaged tips are. Um, and there's plenty of room for that cutter to move back and forth uh, without making any contact. And all the rest of the blade is actually functionally is just fine. So as I sharpen this blade over time, that's going to get better and better. I just don't want to take additional life off of the blade if I don't need to. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead and do a quick test on this one. All right, so you get to see the messy floor here. So we'll go ahead and start that blade up. And we're gonna do a test. I wanna go ahead and use my Ultra test ring and just slide it right through. And it should be a nice clean cut without any grab or pull. You can actually see how it just kind of just pops right off of there. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna stretch the string over and then do a cut like this. That's cheating. What you want to do is you want to take the string, you want to just settle it right through the blade, and you want the, the cutter and the blade to cut on its own without fraying on the, the string. So this blade is good. It's ready to go back to the customer. The other thing that I like to do as well is I like to test the cutter as far as how much pressure it's taking to move the cutter. So this right here, you can actually see this is a go no go this is a blade scale that's also made by hamaguri usa which is dennis's company it's a great scale because it shows what the poundage and pressure is so you can see here that on the average anywhere from two and a half to about three and a half pounds is just right in the sweet spot between two and three quarters and three and, th and a quarter is about where i like to be if i can do it i never want to be beyond the yellow when I'm pressing onto the um, cutter and I don't want to be before it as well because that'll make it too weak just make sure and normally just for the video I'm showing this way I usually have this down on a solid surface and I put my blade drive on top make sure you're holding your socket when you do this as well don't put your thumb on the spring like this because it'll change the tension and I'm just going to go ahead and press down again and you can actually see at about that sweet spot maybe up a little bit towards the upper part of the yellow right there as it just starts in the yellow is where it moves. So this is about three and a quarter pounds. If I actually remove just a little bit of tension and the way you would do that is just reduce the spring tension by pulling up on the, the spring. We'll put this in here. We'll take this blade scale, we'll press that down and you can see it moves more right in that sweet spot now. I don't wanna to remove too much of the tension because the blade is cutting fine. Okay, so this actually is ready to go back to the customer. Um, and uh, thank you again to our two sponsors, uh, Groomer's Best Friend, which is Matthew Yo, out in Washington State. Um, I get uh, my cutters from him. I get my uh, ceramic cutters from him. They're both aftermarket and they've always have worked well for me. Uh, I do a, a five-speed cord from him, um, and I get Dremel tools from him too with a specialty Dremel that he's created for the grooming industry for the tools that we just used too in this video that Dennis makes for doing the adjustments on the springs and the sockets, and then also the blade scale from Hamagiri USA. We're thankful for them and for everything that they do. Dennis also sells a line of flat hone machines. I sell those flat hone machines. Um, I also sell the clipper blade sharpener that you saw me using here, the Nebraska Blades machine. So if you're ever interested in any of those units, you could give me a ring and I would send you a quote. Um, and also um, on this video, if we get at least 50 likes and if we get uh, and anybody that puts a comment on here i'm going to go through if we get to 50 likes and then there's comments that's actually on there i'm going to run through all of the comments so if you want to win these you're going to have to go on the comment section and just make a comment on the video and i will send these two tools for you for free if you comment on this video um, say something nice about the video if you've trained with me say something nice or quite frankly say something mean if you want that's perfectly fine too 
But go ahead and jump on there, um, and I will go through the comments on this, and we will find a winner for those two tools in the future. But thanks for watching. Uh, this customer is going to be happy with this blade now. Um, I just hate that I ended up having to replace a cutter on it. But that's going to happen when you're out in the field, and this is actually better for the customer in the long run. So I hope this helped. If you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. The information for our two sponsors will be below um, in the video in the little drop-down menu that you can pull down, and you can see uh, the links to the websites for these two guys. So thank you very much to them, and uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. And uh, until then, well, stay sharp.